Hey, go ahead. Be careful, don't fall. Very slippery. Yep, wait there. Switching it up on you today. Got the hammer? Yeah. All right, good, let's go. So let's chalk this up to things that I've been slacking on this winter. I checked the forecast for the next week or so. and saw that we have a pretty good stretch of weather coming this week where it's gonna be above freezing most days and just below freezing most nights. And in New England, that's a sign that it's maple tapping season. Got it? Okay, good job. Last year I tried running a line for maples and it worked out okay, but the problem I ran into was maybe halfway through the season, a squirrel chewed through the line and I didn't realize it and I stopped getting sap. For honestly, the number of trees that we tapped, we tapped nine trees last year, but it doesn't really require a line. So what I'm gonna do today is pull down this line uh, or at least as much of it as I can. A bunch of it's probably gonna be frozen in the snow, but I'm gonna tap maybe five trees and just put buckets on them and get the season going that way. Some of this tubing can be salvaged and some of it can't. At the very least, some of it can maybe go toward making droppers. Uh, I'm not gonna go through it right now. Anything that I do keep will have to be sterilized. But for now, I'm just gonna wrap it up. We'll throw it back on the sled and go through it later. If you've got some maple trees on your land that you want to tap, this is not something that requires a really big investment. This is something that pretty much anybody can do even if you don't need a homestead or a whole forest, you can do this if you even have just a few maple trees in your yard that you wanna try and make into some syrup, just to try it out. There's a couple different ways you can do it, but the cheapest way to get into it is gonna to be to use a five gallon bucket method like we do, instead of the buckets that you see hanging on the trees. Those buckets used to be galvanized steel and you're not technically allowed to use those now if you're gonna be selling your syrup. Uh, because of issues with metals leaching out of it. Now you can buy aluminized buckets and plastic buckets and that's one way to do it, but those are gonna be a little bit more expensive and a little bit more labor intensive than if you just go the five gallon bucket route. So that's what we do. To do it, you're gonna need some maple taps. Uh, these are 5 16 so that's the line we run. You're gonna need some food grade 5 16 tubing. Uh, this is to run from your tap down to the bucket. You're gonna need a five gallon bucket like you saw me putting out there and you're also gonna need the lid for that five gallon bucket. The only modification you need to make to that five gallon bucket is in the lid. You can just use a sharp knife. I just use something like this that I carry with me every day. And you're gonna make an X shaped hole in the lid of that bucket. Just cut one slit this way, one slit this way. And that's just gonna create a little bit of a hole, kind of like the opening in the top of a fast food soda cup for your straw. Same thing, you're just gonna create an opening where you can slip that tubing in there. As far as tools, you need a drill with a 5 16 bit if you're using 5 16 taps. And you need a hammer to hammer the taps into the tree. You don't have to hammer them really hard. If you have a heavy wrench, that'll work. Uh, I just have a hammer, so I used a hammer. And you probably saw me using this tool out there. This is a tool that I had made by a friend of mine to push your maple fittings together. Those, that 5 16 tubing and your taps, it's a really tight fit. So what this tool does is it grabs your tubing right there. And once you have your tubing grabbed, you can turn it and you can squeeze this together to push your fittings on. You can try to do it by hand. I've done it that way in the past for a few years. It's the first year I've had a tool like this. Um, it works fine like this. It makes it a little bit 
easier, especially if your hands are wet and they're slipping on the tubes. Like as you can see, it's snowing like crazy right now. So my hands are, are fairly damp and gripping that tubing and trying to push everything together would not be easy. You don't need one of these. Uh, the reason a buddy made this for me is because they typically cost about a hundred dollars. And for the size of maple operation that we are basically just making it for ourselves, it doesn't make any sense to go out and buy one. This cost, I think six bucks for a knockoff vice grip. Um, some just steel stock here, an old wrench that he found that he cut at a yard sale for something super cheap. And then this is just a piece, a, a long threaded hex nut here. Uh, really straightforward. Other than that, you do need a way to boil off the sap. If you're collecting just a couple gallons of sap, you can do it on your stove. It's not gonna be the end of the world and you'll make some syrup. The biggest thing is that it gets really expensive really quickly if you're using a fuel like propane and you're doing it in a setup that's not made to boil off sap because it takes 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. And that's a crazy stat that not a lot of people realize that to make one gallon of syrup, it takes 40 gallons approximately. That's if you have good sugar maples. The rock maples that we're tapping are even less. It takes upwards of 50 gallons of sap on our trees to get one gallon of syrup. And that syrup tastes awesome, but it's a lot of work. So while you can use your stovetop or a turkey fryer to boil off the sap, I recommend if you're really serious about it and you want to do this every year, you can make an evaporator for fairly inexpensive. We've been using an old wood stove that somebody left at the house that I cut the top off of and put uh, stainless steel steam tray pans on. You can actually check out a video of last year right up here, but you can build a similar structure out of cinder blocks. Uh, we're actually building a new evaporator out of an old barrel this year and we're buying a stainless steel evaporating pan made specifically for maple sugaring. So we're putting a little bit of money into it, but it's a fun thing. It's a cultural thing up here in New England. Down South, you've got your crawfish boils. On Cape Cod, you've got your lobster bakes. Down in Texas, you've got barbecue. Out West, I don't know what you guys do out West. You're all a little crazy out there. But sugaring time in New England is something that's really cool and that if you've lived up here for a while, I don't say you have to be a native up here, but if you've lived up here for a while, it takes on this kind of aura about it and it, it's just a really awesome time of year. Pocket? Pocket, yeah. Hey, so, uh, up here? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh. All right, there we go. They were not calling for this snow. Hi. I have no idea where this came from. Daddy. Come on, Em. Watch where you're walking, you are tough. She just goes, I tough. Keep your eyes peeled for that video on the maple evaporator build. I'm probably gonna be starting that this week. Uh, I gotta get it done sooner rather than later. So the quicker I get it done, the quicker we can start boiling. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. One, two, three. <laughs> Grab the rope.